TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK and all around the world. As you can see behind me, YouTube, this is my warning. I'm pretty sure there's nothing crazy in this. You know what I'm saying? Y'all do y'all thing. But do it fairly and justly. Thank you. Um, don't forget, twitch.com. Bottom of the screen is the username. You see it. We do got merch. And we also got a Patreon as well where we post five days per week. But today we fun to watch what Supermax prison in Australia's are, are what we'll start on over now, you feel me? I'm a, what Supermax prisons in Australia are like. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. This is True Crime Central. I haven't done a prison reaction in a minute, man. I think the last one was HMP Whitmore, Whitemore. So I've been thirsty for one. I'm glad it's in Australia. We go here. We go, mate. I did a kangaroo video. Y'all wild. Anyway. There are close to 30,000 prisoners in Australian goals. Wait, it got go. All right, L Reader. For almost half a century, Corrective Services Commissioner Ron Woodham has faced up to many of the country's toughest criminals. Gaining a reputation as a legendary reformer who changed the system forever. Now, I don't, want, I don't wish no prison on man, but this is looking real prison like. Okay. With unprecedented and extraordinary access, the gates are unlocked as we continue exploring the inner workings of the prison system. Guided by the veteran prison's commander, who reveals exclusively his intimate follow. knowledge of this huge and complex industry run with military precision. Where prisoners are con- I don't know, I've seen something that caught my eye. I've seen fresh baked bread. And I don't know what that was. Freshly squeezed orange juice? What was that? Trolled, educated, and rehabilitated. Let's go. And those seeking redemption get a second chance and learn a new way of living. Where dedicated guards must control drugs and other contraband, cope with violent, resentful, or mentally unstable inmates, yeah. and be forever on the alert in the dangerous, impenetrable, maximum security fortress known as Supermax. Impenetrable is crazy. Home to those classified as never to be released. I have to ask you, do you realise it's an offence to bring any contraband into the HRM CC? I've been in my work. Uh, do you have any phones prohibited? Drug into the HRM. Is he standing on something? Bro, is like seven feet tall. CC? I've been in my work. Uh, do you have any phones, prohibited drugs or contraband on in your possession? No officer, no. Thank you. Get around, please. Can do reach. Thank you. So Ronnie, you too? Yep. Even the commissioner gets done here. Oh, 
they got okay, they standing on something. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I just want to say th this isn't done for the cameras. No. This is standard operating procedure. Yeah. We've had two of the bosses come through with us. It doesn't matter who you are. If Barry O'Farrell comes here, he gets the same treatment. Whoever you are, you get tested before you go into this joint. It's maximum security. It's the Supermax. That sounds normal. Building the Supermax took a lot of heat out of maximum security right across the board. The oh my God, I've been watching UK stuff was too long. I don't even know what he just said. I don't know what dude. Building the seat makes took a lot of heat out of maximum security right across the board. Okay. The officers have taken charge at one stage, you would think in some of the jails the crims were running it. <gasps> I think they were. And we took that right off them and gave it back to the officers in total control. Right. That took a lot of heat out of it and it put the officers back where they should be, right on top. See, if anyone now raises... The officers are not on top in prison. I mean, I, gu I guess you can... You can create that illusion, but, you know, the, the, the prisoners know that the, the officers are not on top. There's not enough of y'all. It's impossible. That's why y'all get cool with the biggest inmates that y'all think run the jail, and y'all... You smooth with them, then you smooth in, in general, you know? They hit, we chop it off. All inmates within the HRMCC are deemed to be extreme high risk um, and they are moved on a regular basis to allow for uh, searching of their property, searching of the cell to make sure there has been no um, damage done or contraband placed within the cell. So this is the this, control room, eh? Yeah, this is what I call the nerve centre of the Supermax. And uh, there's 159 cameras in the Supermax. How many? 159 cameras. And the and they, that doesn't seem is that a lot? Go through sequences. Yeah. This is it. We've got exercise yards here. With yeah. th these are the blokes. They're you can not. apply to, to be in that exercise yard with another prisoner. Is that correct? Two, only two. Only two. Yeah. And, and they've got to consent to be with each other. Yeah, and we've got to agree that they can be with each other. And we've got intel that they can't be, or we think they're planning and plotting something. Uh, we split them up. So what do they just talk to each other and walk around? That's it. There's 159 cameras, you told me. I've got them all in front of me. Is there one inch? I ain't never heard of that, man. If it's Supermax, it's Supermax. Everybody's by themselves, ain't they? Where your officer can't see. Other than the cells they live in, everything else is covered. Everything? Yep. Now, now that's camera 455, it says. Hmm. That's 40 foot above the jail. Yeah. And that's particularly if there's an aircraft in the area. Is that what it's, that's all about? Yeah, it can be. It can zoom in on people outside on the street as well or yeah. on the top of the roofs and that sort of thing. But the uh, it, it's specifically put in place for what happens overseas where uh, helicopter extractions are quite common. And where? Has there really been a helicopter extraction in a prison break? And they drop ladders down and prisoners get up and they cart them away with them hanging off the ladders. That's like, cap. That's move. Y'all watch too much movies. That's cap. That's all we think. So you can monitor or aircraft can, movement. Yeah, or they drop we Overseas weapons where? In. Yeah. And then the prisoners are armed inside. Any attempts to escape? Are there things that concern well, you as a commissioner? Yeah, we've found... Um, we've got one prisoner in here for... Uh, five life sentences, mm. who used to be uh, a key maker. And in another jail, he made a key that fitted the maximum security cell he was in mm. out of a plastic tub for their property. Just by watching, never had the key in his possession, just by looking at the key, he made a perfect key after about three months in an attempt to get out. That's it. But he can make a key just by looking at it. And that's why a lot of jails don't let the, uh, when, when, remember we were doing documentaries in the UK, they don't show the keys, and they don't let nobody else see the keys. You cannot see the keys because of that, for that reason. 
That is insane. Boy, done looked at that key so long, he learned learned how to make it. And I the really right people Travis? are in the sieve max. If they were running around in normal routine in the other maximum security jails, it'd be mayhem. And in there, they don't have to prove themselves either. Because as soon as you put some of them out in the jail, they'll arm up. And it's like the old gunfighters in the West. Yeah. Who's going to be top dog? Did a sunshine, Ronnie. Yep. It's the most secure exercise yard in any jail in Australia. As you look up, you can see the anti-helicopter wires. The big wires that yeah. stop one landing with the blades. Yeah. No, even the small choppers can't land yeah. in the positioning of those wires. And then you've got the netting across the top to capture anything that's dropped in or attempted to drop in. So I'm fascinated. There's a guard. Mm, they got all bases covered. You're not throwing nothing above them walls or getting nothing in, no paraphernalia. Huh? Yeah. One of your multi-murderers, Lindsay Rose, tends to it. Now, he's the bloke. Wasn't he a contract killer that killed the wrong people? Is that him? Yeah, he did on one occasion, and he's the key maker I referred to. He's the one he that's next to be, yeah. yeah, a locksmith, yeah. So he gets in here and tends to the oh. guard. That's right. They can't see this area from their cells? No. no. What view from the cells? We're going to have a look at that in a minute. You want to have a look? Can't, can't you see much at all. Nothing? <laughs> bit very little. Bit of concrete Nebraska. <laughs> yeah, more or less. Yeah. We can give them... He looked like he don't take no BS, none. A room with a view of a brick wall. And they, every now and then, I suppose, they hear that uh, horn in the background. I wonder if Spanion was locked up here. It seems to be nice to be getting on that and going back to Sydney. They won't be going back. They aren't going back. Just called Supermax. What is? What's the name of this prison? Did they say it? Is that for an officer? Is it? The cage. The cage. Yeah. No, it's so locked in to make their phone call. Can I have a look at that? That's. <laughs> what's so? Uh, when are they get to make a phone call? Well, they got approved phone list in here. Yeah. That they can phone. Their... Wait, the phones are inside cages. You know what? This is actually smart. Because in America and probably in the UK too, phones phones cause a lot of the ish fights. Like a lot of the little, little fights. When people are on phones and they other inmates is doing crazy stuff around them. But if you just lock people in there on the phone, then hey. Family, everything is listened to live and recorded. And then and uh, you hear every word of the conversation from both sides. And recorded. But not legal visits, but normal visit, uh, normal phone calls, yes. And they're locked in there for the duration and they're let out. This yeah. gap here yeah. is where they put their hands out to get the handcuffs on and draw back in before the gates open. So Oh, they, this is Supermax prison. Okay, okay. I keep thinking it's like a regular prison. Where they're everybody cuffed is, in there. Yeah, yeah. No. Before the hands they get back to the cell, they're cuffed. Yeah. Every one of them. Yep. Yeah. So they're cuffed. And ankle cuffed. An in ankle here. cuffed. Now, how many officers? Is there always two officers? Four in here. Four? Yeah. So... It's very, very tight. So this is... Why, are we, why is the camera right here? I'm lost. What? Ivan Lat spends 24-7 in. Yes. OK. Can it's we have a look at it? Typical so. Yes. Right here. Are these double doored? Oh, it's Goldburn. Okay. So this Goldburn. is what Ivan Mallet spends 24 7 in. Can this we have a look at it? Typical cell. Yes. Right here. This is another airlock. Right. Where the officers, again, the prisoners have to be moved, that flaps open and they put their hands out. Cuffs. 
Everything's concrete, it's all, it's not getting moved anywhere. It's all anchored to the floor, including the bed. There's nothing, no bits of furniture that can be used to barricade a door or... Mm. A okay. Concrete slab, not a metal, not a metal thing protruding out of the wall. Concrete, concrete. Attack an officer with. And then a shower with a rose at the top. Yeah. And oh, we... wow. Now go back. So it is double door. Double door and then a shot. Hold it can on. be used to barricade a door. It's double door. This is what I was looking at. Or attack an officer with. And then... What's this back here? What is this? What is this like a little patio? <laughs> In a shower with a rose at the top. Yeah. And we can help cut the water off, they can't flood anything. So if they look like they playing up here. on the time switch. The water goes off. Yeah. And then out here. Is the exercise yard that they've got. Let me just measure this. I step her out like I'm measuring a putt for nearest the pin. One. Now this is different. Two, three, four metres, rough. So every two cells next to each other has their own private exercise area. Wait. One. Bro, you really don't got to let them out ever. Because, you know, you normally get out for one hour of yard time in a supermax. Nope. Pop your door open, buddy. Two, three, four and a bit. So, again, a slab can't be moved, can't be used. And a bit of sun. Yeah. You really can't see nothing. No escapes from here. No. All inmates are given the opportunity to exercise on a daily basis. Their rear cell doors are open in the morning um, and the opportunity to exercise in their rear yard uh, both in the morning and in the afternoon. I've never seen this in a prison. That's t that's that's I mean, I guess. You've got some good men and women looking after this facility. I've met a few of them today. And Excellent. You wouldn't want to walk a day in their shoes, but gee whiz, they do a job. They do, and they do it well. And, uh, they're, you know, I, I can't speak high in the Yeah. Can I serve correct? Supermax is quite intense. Staff are put under the pump on a daily basis. Um, it's very stressful for staff to work with some of the inmates we have here. Control to the MOH, Mr. Hopkins. Please control, yes, yes. Worst camera angle. Gold burn. Your organisation strives towards sustainability, self-sustainability. We've got industries in the, in the furniture trade. We refurbish the school desks and that for the education. So we make curtains for Spotlight. We make... We you, what, you make what? Curtains for Spotlight. You mean that my curtains may have been made by you? Because I go to Could Spotlight have every now and then. Could have. Our industries are in excess turnover of 35 million a year. Wow, golly. Is this private? Or is it, um, state? This, this is the furniture shop. These are maximum security inmates. Um, we've got 45 inmates that work in here. They do um, all carpentry work. We do contracts for the education department, which is a big contract. And we're doing 10, 10 floors and so forth for the army. We have inmates in here doing trainee ships. They, um, so they can learn a trade as well. It's very similar to a um, furniture shop you find anywhere. I mean, equipment like this machine behind me, it's a um, CNC route, $150,000 machine. Inmates learn to operate the computer, they design and draw and great setup. That's insane, I, okay. They really rehabilitate now here though. But oh, you definitely locked up heavily, but you getting rehabilitated. You learning stuff, they putting, money into you they not putting money in they making 35 million dollars a year but but they doing their thing
this workshop, I mean, you, you've seen they have all the tools, hammers, chisels, all sorts of equipment that they use during the course yeah. of the day, but they love to come down here and work. And they know if they play up or anything like that, they don't come here. We're... But they love to come down here and work. And they know if... These prison, these is prison issue length? This Australia, never mind. Never mind, continue. They My play fault. up or anything like that, they don't come here. We refurbish classrooms. We've I gotta got... remember where we are in the world right now because I ain't never seen that. A couple of hundred units of, of demountables. They can just bring a truck in and, and put a school up. Okay, well this is a minimum security section work, work area. Um, as you can see behind me, these, these six fellows are doing a um, forklift, training? Uh, forklift operator's ticket. Uh, I've got a guy in from the TAFE who... Crazy story. I used to work at a place uh, called Jennings Chevrolet. And I used to work in a parts department. And uh, this is when I was turning up heavy. I, I must have came to work hungover or something one day. And I ran the fork, forklift straight through the uh, garage door. And didn't, re and didn't report it. Didn't tell nobody nothing. Just continued on with my little day. Left, came back the next day, repeated. Came back the next day, repeated. Then that third day, I was fired. You better believe I was fired for sure. Yeah, I was gone. They got rid of me. Give some hands-on skills that they can actually go out and get a job. The gauges are all right. Your lights working? When I started, it was a matter of just locking them up and waiting till their time was done and then kicking them out the door you know this day and age we look at giving they're not working all day they're getting rehabilitated giving them some sort of skill to get them a job outside that's to try and reduce the recidivism rate um, and that's you know there's more and more emphasis on that as time goes by so it's really good hey. Bay maximum security goal. Yeah, we've got to we bake our own bread. Bro, they got a bake shop, construction site, uh, carpentry lab. Well, for the whole system, yeah. Like Brewarner, you wouldn't send it from here, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, on the main runs. Yeah. Bread look good. Over about 4,000 loaves a day, and that's distributed uh, pretty much around the state. Uh, we make weekend lunches, which is like sausage rolls and pizzas, and they're for the inmates for their lunch on weekends. Um, they get made, frozen, and then shipped out. Yeah, the bake baker is a good job, because we also offer um, traineeships here too. Um, I've got seven guys doing certificate two in food processing. I've got a couple of guys who's doing certificate three in business admin in the office. Um, these are certificates they can use when they get out. They sound good, but who's going to hire them? These are felons. Like, I, and I'm, I'm not. I'm just being realistic. You know what I'm saying? That's why they. That's why people reoffend. It's a vicious cycle. You, you, you offend. You get a record. You get out. And there's what what opportunity is there for a felon? Unless there's like some unless there's somebody out there who made a way and who got a construction privately owned construction company who hires, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I don't know if it's different in Australia, but in America, you had a felony, you're done. You better find figure something else out. I don't know. Is it the same there or what? We uh, produce our own milk and also, and we grow a heap of veggies around the place as well. Well, they got a, a whole plantation. I just learned from my uh, video, a plantation is somewhere stuff is planted. It's not only where slaves were, but, you know. They process uh, around about five. So they're in a maximum security prison but they have low security, minimum security jobs and things of St. Helena's. Is this a different job? Is this a different prison? Up to six ton of veg various vegetables per week. They out here <laughs> picking pumpkins out the vineyard? This facility encompasses 1,200 acres of um, farmland, etc. 
We have post- okay, so this is a different jail. Okay, okay. okay. Like 265 inmates here at the moment. We can't hold more than that. Uh, we hope in the near future to build a boning room out the back. Uh, that will process our beef, which will go into all the meals as well. Walking down that road. It- this is minimum security prison. This is not the same one where we started out at. Because this is just baffling to me that they got the prisoners next to a train station with no fences or nothing. Like, what the? Every day, a bit of freedom and things like that is so great. We walked down maybe a kilometre to, to work where we passed duck ponds. You know, compared to a lot of other places, this, this is heaven. <laughs> but at the end of the day, they've got to go back. They still find that hard because they miss their families. But if you're going to do jail, this is the place to do it. All the horses that come up here are ex-gallopers, and my job here is to... So I'm confused, because are all of these prisoners in Supermax? They just go to, like, lower security jobs, or is this a different... Pri- this looks like a different... Turn prison. them into and dressage horse. Bro, is out here a horse whisperer? Horses. And hole. And one of them was just taken recently as a police horse. So I've put my name down to do a stable hands course up at Skane Tafe. Hopefully, uh, it'll be a foundation laid for for um, a job when I when I'm released. Actually, coming to jail was a good thing to me. I was a I was a, a full blown alcoholic for 15 years. Lost my family, lost my you know everyone like that. My wife, my kids. Uh, I now currently do AA every week, which I've been doing for over 18 months now. But it's a positive. That's the way I look at it as long as there's a positive. Out of something bad, always comes something good, and this is the good for me. This is the heaviest jail living some drug. Protective Services New South Wales has approved. Okay, this is Long Bay Minimum Security. A joint operation utilising resources from Protective Services New South Wales and the New South Wales Police Force. I'm amazed you do joint operations with the New South Wales Police Force where visitors are, uh, are, are searched and the contraband you find is quite unbelievable. Yeah, we do regular uh, planned operations with uh, New South Wales Police mm. and they are a drug dog in it and we've even got dogs now that can smell a mobile phone. Taking place at the various correctional centres. Intelligence suggests that contraband is becoming an issue within the Long Bay complex. An area of concern is that contraband may be uh, introduced into the centre via visitors. All visitors to the complex today will be screened by a canine and if necessary, the following complex to the centre via visitors. Thought that was Buddy from 1-4. All visitors to the complex today will be screened by a canine and if necessary, the following may occur. Property search, a vehicle search or a pat or strip search. Uh, The pat or strip search, this is to be conducted by New South Wales Police only. Number is 1012, repeat 1012. Well basically we're back up to the staff that are on the ground. We're uh, like the eye in the sky as such, and we, we can actually watch what's going on. So we ass- Senior Correctional Officer Fergal Molly. System. M- M- if we see something, we're able to then communicate via radio or by telephone and tell them there's something going on that they may have missed. This is Leno. Morning. Hi, who are you here to see? So just make your way over there. Thank you. Where are we? Is minimum security Look, there's a number, number of reasons why they try to traffic drugs in. One can be um, as a currency, um, the other for their own self-fulfillment. Okay, we're officers from the state emergency unit. We're screening everyone coming onto the complex yep. today. Okay, but before we start, I have to caution it is an offence to have any drugs, weapons, syringes, tools of escape, poisons, prescribed medication and non-prescribed medication. No, 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 no. If you have any of these such items, now's the time to declare so. I don't have anything. Okay, no worries. I'll get you guys just to hold your hands like so. And just remain still and silent during the search, thank you. Good boy, nice 
Ripley is an operational drug dog. He's a um, passive alert detection dog. So when he finds drugs, he will actually sit. And that's how he tells me that there's drugs there. He's trained on five odors. He's trained on heroin, cocaine, ecstasy, marijuana, and amphetamines. When Ripley's about to um, search, I put on what's called his it's drug time. collar, and it's like a workout. He knows then that it's time to go to work, as opposed to just his choke tank. I'll gather him up by the lead, hold on to the collar, and get him all excited, get him ready to work, and then I'll say, fetch, and he'll search low, he'll search people's shoes, front and back, and then we'll go up and we'll search their pockets, front and back, and high end. If he's um, cleared the line, if he hasn't given me a positive indication, then we let the people go and move on to the next. I've just received a phone call. They have something? Move on to the next. He looked like he about to sit down. He has something in his butt. I've just received a phone call from another correctional center um, who's informed me that a visitor um, is going to bring in some drugs and of course we'll be targeting that good old Glock visitor. <laughs> Before we start our search, I'm going to have to formally caution you that it's an offence to bring onto this correctional complex any drugs, weapons, alcohol, tools of escape. If we get a positive indication, we pull that person out of the line and conduct a property search. And depending on that, a vehicle search. If we find contraband, the police are called and they put. Oh man. Form a strip search, and that's where please job done then. Yes, good boy. <laughs> One of the visitors um, that we screened and did a property search on. Um, That's where you're going, ma'am. The jail. What we found in her bag was some GBM, which we believe to Ooh. be green vegetable matter, or commonly known as marijuana. Oh. Green vegetable matter is what they refer to marijuana as, and. Drugs can lead to a lot of problems in jails, you know, there's a lot of standovers, a lot of bashings and stuff like that and inmates can be difficult to control when they're under the influence of drugs and alcohol. People are very inventive and they can put it any anywhere. Dogs will find it. If it's there, Good boy. they'll find it. We monitor the boom gate from here, as you can see there's four cameras on it, so it gives a record as to who comes in and out. Attention, attention, complex monitor room to SEC area two, response team. We had some surveillance on that uh, particular visitor coming up from the boom gate, and that visitor was actually seen placing an object out of her bag and put it in her shoe. Good boy, good boy. He ain't sit down. The lady that we just searched has a full syringe she just pulled out of her right boot. Oh. Wow. Syringes are, you know, are, are, are really a nightmare for correctional officers um, because they can be stabbed um, and also with the blood diseases that can be found in those syringes. So that's extremely important uh, for us that we stop that sort of contraband from coming in the right, cells. Right. We're under the impression that you're under the influence of a, of a, of a drug or alcohol because of your behaviour shown here. Okay, so I've just had a conversation with the MOS up there and they feel that um, they're not going to let you have a visit today. Okay, however, you come back when you're, when you're normal, then you can certainly have a visit. Okay. Okay, thank you. Why would she come under the influence? Like, what were you thinking? That was dumb. Just make sure she, she does actually go out. Yeah, I can let you know with today's success, uh, what we've actually done, we've done 295 visitors were actually screened by the canines. 44 visitors' property have been searched. Three visitors have been strip searched by the New South Wales Police. There are strip searched and everything. Been two police charges and six visitors have been denied entry to the correctional centres. They will be referred to... Yeah, man, my, 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 my mom's ex-husband was locked up for seven years. We used to go visit. Um, yeah, man, 
This is eerily similar. I don't remember no dogs or nothing, but. Our prohibition section to find out if they were Maybe. not allowed to visit the I was young. Any, uh, anymore for a period of time, as deemed by the commissioner. I love my job, and you get the drugs, and you get the fines, and you see his happy little face, and he's playing with his dummy. It's the best job in the whole world. All right, Katie. Silver Water Women's Correctional. Okay, so it's a bunch of different ones in here. All right. You see, the government made a decision many years ago to close down psychiatric hospitals and put people back in the community. Do I now take it there are people who you have control of that maybe you shouldn't have control of, they should be kept somewhere else? We still have you know, hundreds of mentally ill people, hundreds. Yeah. And, um, and some of them commit very serious crime as well. Yeah, exactly. And they can't be just held in a hospital. This is the heaviest women's jail. And we've got uh, some of the most serious women offenders in Australia here. So committed some gruesome murders, uh, killed children. I had to battle to build this. So where did they go before you built this? They'd be just up in the jail, getting into all sorts of problems. Yeah. Because they don't know, they're not in touch with reality. So this is on his people. same watch? And they'd go and... Uh, take something from another prisoner's cell and get assaulted and this reduced a lot of tension in a jail. It's a, a facility where the case management is it's a psychologist then the uh, health staff and the custodial staff work on the one case file. We're quite effective, we keep, keep a lot of them alive. And what are you going to do to make sure you don't come back, eh? Uh, just never break the law again, never. Mm. You've got to stay keep on your medication. Yes, yes. Mm. Don't go off it. Yes, exactly. What about you, Dom? I'm just in here just for a bit, just for a bit of a common assault that I'd happen with my boyfriend. Yeah. I've been... Just a bit of common assault. Just not too much, just a little bit. Just a piece of, just a piece of assault on my boyfriend. Hey, listen, if your girlfriend or your boyfriend beating you up, call the police. In mental wards since for eight and a half, four. If your girl beating you up, definitely call the police quickly. In both scenarios, call the police because take care of yourself out here. Eight and a half years. Have you? It never yeah. gets better. Are you medicated? You like last night? I had a few bad dreams. Do you feel like you're all right now? Yeah, I feel all right today. As soon as I woke up, I knew that I, you know I could. Okay, and you've got to think of happy thoughts. Hey, Mr. Water. Yeah. Um, is there any chance for an exercise bike so we can exercise on? Because our bike's broken. Well, I got you one before. But our bike's broken out the back here. Yeah, okay. Uh, got one on order. I got you one at the bay, remember? Kisley Jones, how are they? You've been cutting up? Yeah. When did you cut up there? Days ago and Did you? It's got the uh, ink part of the biro in there. And yeah. The nurses don't, haven't even. You'll end up buggering all your veins, you know. Mm. No good. Mm. Mm. What's buggering? I'll get you there. I'll speed up the exercise bike. Yeah, okay? Let's go and have a look at the cell. Pretty bare here, Ron. Yeah. But um, they're allowed some chalk and a board to write on. Yeah. Got TV. Behind perspex, so it can't be. They can't break it. Can't be they use it to cut themselves. J just, we were outside with a, uh, an inmate. Mm. She's a murderer. Mm. But she's also someone who continually attempts self-harm. Yes, continually. She used to run a fire, like flat out into a corner of cement, and she split her fire from the top. No, to but I don't even understand how it got muted. I didn't do it. 
I, I, there's no reason for me to mute it, right? I don't know. What I had said was, there's a shower in, the, in every unit here. I don't recall in the UK, and I know in America, people don't have showers inside of their jail cells. Their individual cells. And I said, this is the Supermax, because he's the warden of the Supermax for men. So he's the warden for this one as well. They got to be on the same campus, which is crazy. I just think that shower is... I said, these is like mini, mini studio apartments. To the bottom, and it was about that open, and, and they had to tie her up. Yeah, I probably so, pressed them. And um, they couldn't sew it. The gap was that wide. They couldn't sew it up. And uh, I saw her over at one bay, and I walked in, and I said, uh, what do you need? She said, I want an exercise bike so I can take my aggression out on the bike. So I got her one that day, yeah. and she lasted nearly four months. On the bike? On the bike, not causing problems. And all of a sudden, bam. Off the rails? Yeah. yeah. She stabbed another woman 40 times just to see what it was like to kill somebody. The woman hadn't done anything to her? Damn! Just to see what it would feel like? You running experiments on death? D-E-A-F? Death? No. No. Just to kill her. Okay. That's peak. That's tough. This is a high dependency unit. These are the most uh, mentally ill people we have in this facility. And probably some in the system. So where are you back in court, sir? Huh? I'm back in court 21st and 22nd. Yeah. And what do you want to you do? You don't sound Australian. Say to the magistrate. Uh, well, there's not much I can really say, but I'd like to just oh, yes, yes. let him know that I've got a little kid on the on the way. My missus is six weeks pregnant, and how long have you been battling mental illness? Is it something? Is it caused by drugs? What causes yeah, it? Yeah, I've I've been smoking ice for probably five years now, and yeah, drug and alcohol is a big thing in my life. I didn't have much love growing up, so at the end of the day, I'm here, aren't I? And I want to get out and just try and get normal, you know what I mean? I've got a kid, that's my first kid in when, ever. When's the baby due? 2013. How old were you started using ice? Probably 18. So this was 2012? Well, I look at that young bloke I'm talking to, he's the same age as my young bloke. Mm -hmm. It breaks my heart, you know? Nice. And he admits to what use of ice, God knows what else he's done. Yeah. And you're not astonished to see him back here in three or six months? Not really. There's a missing step on the outside. There's some cycle that can... Yeah, it's like, we get them in here, they get cleaned up, they're great. They go outside, they try and do their best. There's just not that help out there for them. Yeah. The real world can be de depressing, honestly. Especially like going back to people who don't believe in you, don't think you can achieve anything, but and only see you under one light that you're trying to elevate above. It gets spooky. It's something you don't expect when you first join the job, but when you do come in, you form a bit of a working relationship, whether whether you like it or not. That's the reality that's it. of it. That's how it works. Yeah, and you have to do it, you know, for my safety, the staff's safety, the inmate's safety. What are you all Corey boys, eh? You know what's over the wall here? Yeah. Sydney Stadium, Olympic Stadium. Yeah, Stadium. 2000, I called the race. This is one I read about her, sir. Go on. Adley. Kathy Freeman. He's Kathy running around the track because she is so uh, proud to be black. When she rang with her flag all up high, she looked up at that evening in the sky and thanked her to be blessed because she was our very best. Trying to, well. them, trying to get them published at the moment. Yeah. Them published, yeah. You won't get them published in here. I know, sir. You know, the poems. Trying to get away from crime, you know, and yeah. get away from the drugs and the alcohol and all that day, you know. I started up with, with growing up with Aboriginal people up in the bush. At a very young boy, I was taken to the uh, site of the Mile Creek Massacre, mm. where 28 women and children were murdered by white people. Uh, I can see by looking at you, you're, you're, you're emotional about this, you're moved by that. As I went through the ranks, I, I never heard about that it. there was a lot missing. 
mm. for Aboriginal people. And so we ended up buying that three kilometres of... Bolund, minimum security. Okay, Bolund A, minimum Parish security. River frontage up at Tabulum, and we built a facility. This is beautiful. Be there for mainly Aboriginal people, men and women. Meeting in Bolund, means second chance. So the, this guy, Is he the overseer of all of these places? Because he's spoken on almost he's spoken on all of them. He must be the overseer to all of them. Everybody has to report to him, and then he has like people under him as like managers or something. That's how it seems. Men and women meeting in Belanda means second chance. It's a second chance at life. Like they've had their their ch first chance, I suppose, going through life, going through juvenile justice. And then they turn up in the mainstream after they turn of eighteen. Chris Walker, uh, elder. He's an elder. Come here because they, they're sick of the jail system. They want to have another go, where they can sort of change their life around. Their issues are mainly drug and alcohol, anger management, and stuff like that. He's talking about Aboriginals. We're a working cattle property and we take residents here who have been to court. They've been convicted, but their sentence has been suspended and they, they're referred Manager. to us. And they're here roughly between six to 12 months. We take predominantly Aboriginal men and women between 18 and 40. Alcohol and drugs, they destroy a lot of families, you know. It's not their fault, you know, with these people. They do know what's right and wrong, but they, do, they don't know any other way. You know, they just need someone to just to give them a bit of guidance to show them another track in life. They've done a great deal of good for Aboriginal people, those programs, and, and uh, a lot of them don't come back. That's good. My mum, that's my old Oberon, minimum security. That's my sister, that's my mum, that's my old man. There's my girlfriend, I've been in her for about a year and a half. You know, I'll probably get engaged to her when I get out. <laughs> to the kitchen. I think she's been faithful. Area. All the boys spend a lot of time here, um, cook up some big feeds. You know, the Bro, why is his face blurred? Why did you even volunteer for this and then blur your face? In jail, they supply pots and pans and, and a knife, which is unusual for a jail too, but, you know, we're trusted with that. It's minimum security. The development of the program um, was came about in the late 80s, uh, where we noticed um, incorrect... Was that George Bush? What is going on? Dennis Carey, state manager, Young Adult Offenders Program. Since the recidivism rate, the return to jail rate of young adult offenders was uh, considerably high, e.g. to the point of a high 90%. We had to do something. 18 and 25 year old males are very, very impulsive. It's high risk taking behavior. It could be your son. That 18, I just said 18, 18, say it again. Are very, very something. 18 and 25. 18. 18 to 25. My Australian accent is much better than my UK accent, I feel. My, my British accent. Your old males are very, 18. very impulsive. It's high risk taking behaviour. What doing, lad? What doing, lad? It could be your son 18. that had a spur of the moment, impulsive, <laughs> stupid mistake, drank too much. Stupid mistake. Stupid mis stupid mistake. Sure. Run off the road and killed someone and in jail. I've seen people we've literally had to drag off a truck on a Sunday to start the program, didn't want to be here. Sunday. Sun and in 16 weeks time we can't get- Didn't want to be here. Get rid of them, they don't want to leave because they've changed so much and grown. Um, thanks guys, so today's uh, expedition, uh, we're gonna be going out on the Moomba Loomba Plateau. Uh, we'll be out there till tomorrow. So today is about uh, the plateau. 
uh, will be out there till tomorrow. You gotta loosen this top button up. So today is about uh, cool the, these that. fellows are nearing the end of the program. It's about putting them in a position of uh, responsibility. Julian Anderson, adventure facilitator? Handing the trust and responsibility back to them. Today uh, we're going to leave the centre and go out in the bus. Uh, my role is to mentor and guide these guys through the program. Mm. I didn't want to get out of jail not having achieved anything. So for me, by helping these young fellas... I'd do something I'd else, man. This can't be a part of my rehabilitation if I'm in Australian prison. I'm not going out there. I don't want to be a part of nature. I don't want to do that. It's me. You know, the opportunity to say, hey, I, I actually did something. Let me go build a bookcase or something. And I got something out of it. So I guess it's a personal thing. Back before, I just used to do things about thinking and I used to like not listen to anyone, not take advice from people. But now, like, we can think straight, think before I do something. It's those kind of things. You don't um, appreciate what you've got until it's gone, you know? And you start to realise what you can do in, in order to be able to obtain that back and be able to keep it. I'm 20 years old. I'm 20. I'm 19. Today, guys, we're doing Dangle Duo, but when you're on the top of the plate. I'm 19. 19. That form, we're going to ask you what's changed for you in the program. <laughs> Being in Oberon, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to have to put some trust in people. When you're up there on the high ropes and that, you know, your life's literally not in your hands. You know, if the bloke down there isn't paying attention or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. Boys, give a bit of encouragement, eh? Then you can, you can fall. You know, you can seriously injure yourself. Just like, yeah, you to get up. Don't hurt. We're doing You got it. The thing for me is you have to get in there and have a go, you know. And you have to get in there and have a go, and you learn. You have to have a positive attitude to things. Stretch those legs. Hold on. <laughs> Doing all these programs shows you and the and teamwork, a positive lifestyle, and just to um work better at things, try harder, and you know that there's so much more to live for than being stuck in jail. Yep. Um, I don't have very many master criminals here. There's no Ronald Biggs that have planned a crime for three years before committing it. It's usually an impulsive mistake. Sometimes it's fueled by drug and alcohol or anger. Go first. I could do that. Him first. And we're in the business of putting ourselves out of business. We don't want people to come back to jail. Can't give up. Nah. Never will we give up. We do not get inmates from Mars. They do not come from Mars and we send them back to Mars. They're people's sons, fathers, and they could well live next door to you or work beside you. They're normal people. So all in all, everybody in the world's prison, everybody in developed areas, prison system is better than America's. Okay, so grab yourself some gear, load up. All I'm not doing this. This is the, this is the one where you can count me out. The group kit, we'll get I see a whole lot of nature around. Out of here. Uh, I see lots of changes in the inmates over the 16 weeks. The ability to speak up in a group for a lot of these guys have never... It's like I feel Timon and Pumbaa about to pop out and sing a wimboet, a wimboet. Like, I'm not doing it. I'm good. Yeah, they've never sat in a group. They've never worked as a team. Uh, they've never been able to listen to others. This whole program is about giving them some ideas and then testing them on those. Because uh, in the near future, a lot of these young guys are going to be back out in the community where they don't have somebody looking over their shoulder or keeping them on the right track. You can clip that loop. That if you loop don't provide these uh, opportunities, uh, they're getting a rock the world with nothing. And a lot of them do have nothing. Okay, so giving them that with. opportunity, giving them that platform, yeah. um, I think is probably the most important thing you can do. 
and there's not many programs that, that offer it other than other than this program. So, imagine this. Imagine the abseil's really steep. I've done a couple of things at this jail, like I've uh, got my um, blue card, forklift tickets, and bobcat tickets. So when I get out, I've got more opportunities to work and do better things for myself on the outside. Doing really well, mate. Yep, that's it. Keep your feet nice and wide apart. No, I wish I would have done things a lot different, to be honest. I can't change what I've done. It's what I do from now on that counts. They in prison having the time of their lives. So I believe what I do from here on in will determine where I end up in the future. Salute them. Right, start taking the slack out, guys. All right, Corey, Dory, I got you. Mum didn't want to see me in there, you know, in the big white, in the green and that. I haven't really seen much of my dad since I've been in here. Because he's kind of supporting me at the same time when I'm in here. Like, it was hard for me when I was out, but cool. like, I have a confidence in myself that I can say no. Since then I'm in here doing all these all this programs, like this stuff. You wanted to say BS. <laughs> look, look. Say no. Since then I'm in here doing all these all this programs. Like nah, you wanted to say BS? Like this stuff. Yeah, it's changed me. Remember to set your goals past the trapeze so you can reach it. Oh yeah, I'm going to try and um, get to Wally. You for the jump? Or you can do it. Put your hands out. It's far away, bro. Oh, I can like, I get that. To, it's not that far. No, I'm right, right. right. Trying, trying to get to it, that's all. And like, try to pass on the message that, you know, not dude is come here. Ain't like, dude going to pull you at the same time when you're like, doing bad things, get a job, you know, just, just live a normal life yep. instead of coming to jail and ruin it. Yep. Oh! Nice. Nice. Pretty easy. Yep. Nice. What? Oh. On this camp, I've asked the, the boys to write a four-page letter to themselves. And I've said to them that I will send that to them a year after they're released. And I think with all goal setting, it's uh, if you write your goals down and you set it out clearly, it holds you more to that. So if we can get That's true. them to write those down, uh, it's a really good reminder. 12 months down the track, hey, this was your idea. Yeah, this is where you wanted to be. Um, are you still on track for that? What are you doing about that? I sit back and I think about all the, all the things I've done with my family and um, the things I could do better and the things I could do more of. And when you, when you come to jail, like for me, my family come and visit me every single weekend, you know, and I, I, see, I see tears on my, mom, on my mother's face. And, and if, if that isn't enough, if that isn't enough to make to make you learn your lesson, then there's not going to be many other things that will. It's the last, it's the last obstacle, man. There is no magic pill. I, I'd love, and I tell them an induction. I'd love to be able to give every inmate a magic pill they could take that would prevent him coming back from jail. Uh, we can't stop an inmate coming back from jail. What we do is we equip them with the tools to stop them coming back to jail, and it works. I'M THE KING OF THE WORLD! It's the W prison system, man. I'm disappointed in America right now. It's very challenging um, being released from jail into the community. A lot of people are institutionalised from their time in custody, so just simple tasks can be very difficult. Imagine being released after 20 years into, into the community and not knowing how to use an ATM card, not knowing how to catch a bus. A lot of buses now no longer accept money, you need tickets, and just knowing the process of what you need to do in order to just do normal day-to-day -day activities can be incredibly challenging. And so having someone in the community to assist you to adapt and deal with those issues is essential and probation and parole service does provide that. Um, offenders can be placed on supervision by community offender services either by order of the court or from release from custody by the state parole authority. Hello Fook, how are you today? I'm alright. And that's where a probation is from custody. What's doing there? By the state parole authority. Hello Fook, how are you today? I'm alright. Court or from release from custody by the State Parole Authority. Hello, Fook, how are you today? I'm alright. And that's what... That's a crazy name. I wonder what's his last name, you? That'd be Heat. 
<laughs> I'll be introducing myself to everybody, no cap. Where a probation and parole officer will assist an offender to give them the support they need to become a functioning member of the community again. Oh, I've been all right. Been okay? Yeah. What's been happening? Not one single parole officer goes on their own to see these people, especially their unannounced home visits. Mm. There's a lot of difference between telling an offender you're going to be there at four o'clock tomorrow yeah. and let them be all prepared for you yeah. than to walk in at eight o'clock that night with no warning. So here we go. Yeah, and you see the real thing. Mm. And of course, the, there's always, no one goes on their own. Mm. Okay, gold burn, we back to maximum. How's it going? What's doing? All right. How's it going? You're on remand? Yeah. You're not very up. That wasn't a very smart question. Did y'all just peek what I seen walking up to a gate? Prisoners behind a gate talking about you're on remand. Yes. What's doing? All right. How's it going? You're on remand? Yeah. You're not very old, like how old are you? Please help. How long do you think you'll get? <coughs> a couple of years. Yeah. You coming back? Not here, no. Corrective Services is the agency that can't say no. Um, we get whatever the criminal justice system hands us and it's our job to deal with that. We've had some bad days. Uh, we certainly had some uh, you know, hard times during those bad days. But the good days outweigh the bad days. And if we had more bad days than good, I wouldn't be here. What about you, champ? First time in, learning a valuable lesson. I've got three little girls and um, fiance outside. And, yeah. How old are your kids? Six, four, yeah. and two. There's absolutely no reason why you cannot go out into the community and lead a fulfilling life in the community. Have your family, have your white house with a white picket fence. There's, there's no rule that says you're not entitled to that just because you have been in jail. What are you doing, mate? Well, ma'am, you're clearly, clearly being very naive to the real world. Oh, is this my eye? Look at my eye, it's swollen. That's crazy. Look how wide this one is and this one's like shut. I look, I look like Charleston White right now. That's tough. Remind, no good. I said when I was a kid, I was fascinated by what was on, going on behind those walls. You want to know what the unknown is. Yeah, so y'all let me go through a whole stream like this? Ain't nobody said nothing. I know my eyes is normally low, but like, dang. Like, one is, like, this is normal. Wait, no, this is normal. And this is, like, swollen. I, okay. All right. yeah, you want to see what's in there, but once you see it, you're like, oh, everyone's a person. They're all people. Just committed a crime. Jail should, in many instances, be the that the place of last resort, not the place of first option. Mate, it breaks my heart at both your age, you know, being in here. When you get sentenced, you do the program, right? And, yeah. and, and the experts say, this bloke has shown that he can control his anger. He's not gonna belt someone in a pub anymore, you know? This bloke has got a bit of potential. This is society taking care of its own rather than pushing them behind large walls and to all intents and purposes forgetting about them because in most cases those inmates will at some stage be released back onto those streets. If they avail themselves and do something about of the programs yeah. and do something about their offending behaviour by, while they're in here, yeah. some of them will never come back. Yeah. Some of them will never come back. And that's worth the effort from us yeah. and it's worth the effort from them. Commissioner of Corrective Services, Mr. Ron Woodham, he's been the one who's uh, directed us, guided us, led us. Many programs in the Department of Corrective Services in New South Wales would not exist without his vision, his leadership. Mm. How would Ron Woodham like to be remembered? Uh, I'd like to be remembered that... Um... I wonder how he really is without the cameras. If he's really this guy, salute. I believe he is, though, because this is not America. This is... Somewhere else. This is Australia, so maybe he's this nice. Man. I made a real positive, worthwhile contribution to corrections in New South Wales. Yeah. And that uh, contribution to corrections in New South Wales. Yeah. And that uh, the changes that I drove and implemented 
uh, were positive and for the better of the system and that people in years to come will benefit from it, staff and, and uh, prisoners. That's and crazy. some people in New South Wales, I hope I've kept you the safe as I, as I could. On that note, you've done your job. Good luck, old mate. Okay, mate. Well, I'll tell you something. Balls. It's been an unbelievable day. I mean, this was really informative, man, for, for you know, me and all of us that have not watched any type of Australian jail type situation. I learned a lot. Um, I almost feel like I can build a cabinet, bake some bread, Whisper to a horse. Uh, this has been very informative. No, in all our seriousness, though. Salute, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. I'm gone.